Thereafter, we can then look at the data with, a, with an aim of improving performance and actually getting right into the detail of what athletes are doing during a game of football. OK, this time, fellas, this is a hard one now. We're checking over our shoulder. So that's the hardest one you want to do. You're scanning all the time. You're looking for traffic. What I don't want you to do is go on your heels. Over the last 10, 15 years, what we've seen in football is, is an increase in high intensity covered. So there's definitely more of an emphasis on speed in the current game. After exercise, what we, we're probably looking at is, is ways to, to, to monitor and track and improve in terms of fitness. <laughs> To, 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 to produce is certainly something that all top performance directors and, and top performance practitioners are looking at during elite professional football. So I think in essence what player allows us to do is, is, is to, to take this technology to the masses so we can align ourselves to, with what the elite players are doing and obviously set benchmarks for elite performance. Nine. The My Coach Elite team system from Adidas. It's a future-defining combination of wearable technology, digital innovation, and professional sports. And it's already changing the way teams train to win. Smart jerseys have electrodes and sensors woven into the fabric. A small pod captures key metrics and physiological data, power, speed, distance, heart rate, acceleration, field position. Hundreds of data records per second from each player wirelessly transmitted to a central mobile server, then delivered to trainers and coaches on the sidelines on their iPads instantly. They get easy to digest data visualizations. For the first time at their fingertips, they can monitor, track, and compare the fitness and limitations of all their players. They can manage to peak physical performance and make decisions in real time, player by player, and for the team as a whole. Major League Soccer has embraced the MyCoach Elite team system. The first smart league with the first technology of its kind. Eight. wear the units every day, whether it be from whether they're training with the team or from a rehab perspective. It might be uh, we'll gather the training information in terms of on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and then how that accumulates then over two weeks, three weeks and four week training loads, whether that be from an absolute point of view and a relative point of view from training, so we can get information in terms of what that player is doing over a longer picture. From pre-season, the game values, we look at that in terms of how each player performs. So we might have one player, for example, Seamus Coleman, who produces a large amount of sprint and high intensity distance, whereas on the other side we've got Leighton Baines, which might be, might be a bit more explosive distance inclined. So it's almost weighing at the balance and looking at that in relative terms, rather than just the absolute value. So you could have 200 metres of high speed running for one player, 200 metres of high speed running for another player, but it means a completely different thing. When we're exposed to like high amounts of explosive distance, like high acceleration deceleration values in a split change second 
we're, we're obviously exposing them to, to, to high amounts of eccentric soreness. So if we're exposing them to too much eccentric soreness going into, say, a match day minus two going into game day, are we exposing them to an elevated risk of injury? So it's obviously exposing them to the right amount of metrics on the appropriate day. Whereas, so it's obviously then adjusting the volume levers of that metric scene all time it's not saying you can't do any explosive distance or any high speed running two games before a game but it's getting the volume of that sort of metric right on the appropriate day leading into match day so we look at sort of the relationship sort of, sort of stress load and decelerations sort of as an eccentric tolerance strength measure so if someone's like produced a high amount of decelerations but their level of DS, DSL remains constant to that then they're sort of tolerating that level of deceleration well but if their stress load jumps up higher than sort of the decelerations is that telling us there's, a, there's something going on, is there a risk of injury which possibly that could account for. I think one of the big things in terms of how we've been in to utilise the Viper this, this year in the past couple of years is obviously using it as a return to play strategy and tool. We have a couple of ways of looking at this in terms of what players performed before they got injured, what were sort of their distances, what were their exposed jack cells and D-cells, what was their heart rate response to sessions and can we try and expose players to this gradually as they come back towards training, say if it's a six week injury, there's a gradual exposure to that if they're getting towards that final two week stage or obviously exposing them to high vol higher volumes of what they're normally exposed to also trying to get them gradually towards a higher percentage of their maximal speed that they'll be reaching during from pre-season data that we already have. And then it's also looking at not just absolute terms but in relative terms into that, how that player work, it, it responds in a game. Some of the research that recently been published from the ProZone data tell us that the game is getting more intense in nature. So that would tell us that total distances are coming down and the more high intensity actions such as the sprint distance and the high speed running are going up in games. So obviously we need to look at both the, the different aspects of the game in terms of what's appropriate on different game base. If you look at it from a game perspective, if we're exposing players to lots of small sided games, we're exposing them to lots of explosive distance and sheer number of efforts within different acceleration distance, deceleration velocity bands whereas if you open up the pitch and go to bigger numbers where it's, the, it's more game based situations then we're going to players are going to be exposed to more high speed running for a, a, a wide player or more explosive distance for a centre half and also the sheer magnitude of that acceleration and deceleration is because if there's more open area to develop speed and power then the, that athlete's going to have to break quickly. Six. The really exciting thing for me as a scientist working in football with regards to the G5 unit is it possesses additional characteristics that have been built in that will recognise goalkeeper specific actions. So dives, repeated dives, short sprints followed by dives. Optimize G5 uses a goalkeeper specific algorithm based on our IMA platform to measure accelerations, decelerations, changes of direction, jumps, both height and frequency, uh, metabolic power, repeat high intensity efforts and return to feet after the goalkeeper dives. As it stands at the moment, the only device that gives you those algorithms is obviously the Catapult G5 unit. Goalkeepers have a unique training regime where they can do up to eight times more work in training compared to games, whereas field-based players generally match their training demands to the game demands. So now that we can actually track dives and goalkeeper specific sprints and the like, it puts a meaning to the information that we get. So it's not just general information that we're trying to apply to them, it's something that's been produced for goalkeepers as goalkeepers. Up until this point there hasn't been a way to accurately measure a goalkeeper's training load. 
and arguably they're the most important player out on the pitch. Well, I've been working with Catapult now for eight years. We've been quite intrinsically involved in the development of a number of the features that are specific to the Catapult software and quite closely involved certainly in the development of this G5 unit. So it's exciting times now for Catapult. It's an all-encompassing performance monitoring tool that captures micro-movements that can't be seen by the human eye. This is an off-the-shelf technology. This is individually sourced electronics using intelligent algorithms to capture data and provide information that's never been obtainable before. This is the MyCoach Smart Ball. This latest innovation from Adidas coaches you to kick like a pro. Pinpoint your foot strike. Know the power of your kick. See the effect of spin and the flight path to become a master of dead ball kicks. Get game. Improve yourself and share your results. Match pro level kicks and perfect your performance. Challenge yourself and share with your friends. Unleash your best. Know your game to improve your game. All you need to take your performance to a whole new level. What's up Kickstarter? I'm Mark. I'm one of the founders of Dribble Up. When I started playing sports, I thought I was really good. Until I got caught from the 6th grade team. From that moment on, I was obsessed with training. Whether it was a driveway, field, or house, didn't matter. Anytime, anywhere, I was practicing. While I was playing sports, my brother Eric was building robots that play sports. First we started with the Dribble Up Smart Basketball. It's the number one best-selling smart basketball on Amazon today, and it's used by coaches and players all over the world. Now, we're on to our next adventure, the Dribble Up Smart Soccer Ball. We're changing soccer balls forever. Today, you buy a ball, it's a dumb ball. It doesn't really do anything. With Dribble Up, you get a specially designed soccer ball that connects to your smartphone and trains you to be a better player. In the app, the virtual trainer gamifies your workout with live ball tracking. Alternating sole flick. Using the sole of your right foot, roll the ball right to left, and then repeat. You'll even get live audio feedback so you can adjust in real time. Let's go, let's go. When you're done, you'll get a drill-by-drill -drill breakdown revealing your strengths and weaknesses. Here's the world's first interactive light-up soccer kicking trainer for kids, the Socket. Soccer is the world's favorite sport, and the USA is learning to love it too. But learning to kick the ball with proper technique and power can take a lot of time and practice, even with good coaching. Introducing the Socket, wearable technology for soccer. The Socket is an interactive soccer training aid, ideal for kids 5 to 12 years old, but great for anyone. It's fun, easy to use, and provides immediate feedback on your kicking style. Fit the socket over your kicking shoe, and it will light up only when you kick the ball with the correct technique and form. And the socket gives back. A portion of all proceeds goes to St. Jude Children's Hospital for cancer research. I had previously used the Player Tech GPS before uh, with a couple of other teams that I've been involved in over the last two or three years. Um, had very good experience of it, and so uh, when I spoke to the management team, uh, we sat down and looked at what it offered and uh, we, we felt that it was something that we could really go with and to cap it off then it was very cost effective and um, it was something that we could really rely on. 
The main benefits uh, from, from my point of view from, as, a, as a football coach is that I can liaise with the strength and conditioning team and, and in, in this case Rob uh, who is the head of strength and conditioning for the player team uh, in terms of the player loading uh, for, for sessions and that gives us a good understanding of uh, I suppose how many metres the players have ran, the, the speed that, that they're running at um, and it can have an impact in terms of the length of our sessions on the pitch. Uh, so from that point of view, it can it can it can help me, but more particularly help Rob to liaise with me in terms of what what those sessions should should look like. The research is relatively sparse, so it allows us to kind of develop a framework and identify what's the main needs and performance determinants for the sport. It really helps you quantify um, what you can focus on, so you're able to identify. Um, how much distance a player needs to cover depending on position so um, a full back would need to cover a different set distance through a, a midfielder and that will allow me to program for my um, sessions what one player uh, covers compared to the next player and it goes through everything, it goes through um, the speed which I need to travel at or distance per minute. The way I use um, player tech day to day would be uh, really like planning and preparing my sessions so I'd have a, maybe a set distance that I need to cover in um, a session and the GPS allows me just to kind of quantify that. So um, it's easy enough um, for maybe some sessions to identify how much you're traveling, but if you get kind of um, game specific, it kind of is a little bit harder. So it allows me um, to plan from session to session. Um, it also allows me to identify which uh, players, um, how high their player loads are. The metrics that I use um, and trying to relate to my players are the ones that they're most relative to. So uh, things like uh, distance per minute, uh, overall distance, um, top speed, and these metrics the players understand, so they're able to, um, I'm able to relate, relate that to them. Um, it also allows me to kind of um, look at previous performances and compare uh, from game to game so they can see are they improving um, and able to identify um, have, they, have they got better from game to game.